How you doing? This is Ivan with Bite Size Wisdom for Busy People, and I'm back with another idea to help you live more consciously. Today, we will continue our discussion on negative emotions, and specifically, that you have the choice or right to not be negative. When many people realize they need to work on themselves, they immediately say, I'm ready to change, just tell me what I need to do, and I will do it not realizing that this is an unreasonable request they are making. First of all, they do not know if they are capable and ready of doing what needs to be done. And second, not realizing that even if they knew what they needed to do, they don't yet possess the integrated will needed to even carry it out. So whatever would have been asked of them is not reasonable in the sense that they will not be able to keep their promise. And as many of you may already know, many schools of spiritual or self-development, which end up resembling more of a cult, will make unreasonable requests of their students, like secrecy, or to promise not to do this, not to do that. And in time, the students realize it's simply not possible for them, and their progress stops or even goes backwards. So just as important as knowing what you need to do is knowing not what to do and why. Before planting seeds in our self-development garden, we must also prepare the soil by removing the weeds. A key teaching of something that we need to not do is learning not to identify with negative emotions. This is preparing the soil. By learning to exercise your internal attention you can eventually have the choice of whether to identify or not. But by not knowing you have this choice, your negative emotions will convince you that you have all the right in the world to be negative. You are then fully justified at lashing out at the person who ticked you off. Can you see the difference this can make, this shift in perspective? Ultimately, if you realize it's your choice, whether you identify or not, and experience what it is like when you don't give in to your negativity and the higher state this can lead to. It can serve as motivation to continue your self-development work because you will, at a practical level, see the benefits through the distinct contrast between being lost and under the spell of a negative state and the state of inner freedom when you don't succumb. You will then be well on your way to genuine practical work on yourself, as opposed to if you came across an idea or a teacher that says that you must promise not to be negative at all times. Without the proper understanding and inner work, you would not be able to carry this out and then would be hard on yourself as a result of not being able to do it. But if you can understand that this is an unreasonable demand for most people, and learn that it is your choice. The flexibility will allow you to be more gentle with yourself and to work at your own pace. Some days will be better than others, but all your experiences will add up, even the days you were not able to make the choice of not being negative will serve as practical learning material for you. Eventually, through your deep understanding, you will be able to not be negative more of the time than not you will really see the value in making that conscious choice. You will then have direct experience and understand for yourself why you need to make a certain choice for your own ultimate good. All right, guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share with anyone who may find it useful. I really appreciate your help with my little YouTube channel. And until next time, I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world during these crazy times. Um, but just right now, use it as a time to focus on your personal growth. It's a great opportunity for that. So take care. Peace.